Hey everyone, Mitchell Gould here, and in today's video, I'm gonna go over the LinkedIn ads taxonomy that I use in my accounts. So uh, I use a certain naming convention for my campaign groups, my campaign names, and ad names to make it easy to navigate the account so I know exactly what's running, which audiences are running, and it also makes it easier to review performance, especially when you're pulling in the data into a Looker Studio report that I use. And also when you're going into the account to make changes, it really helps uh, make the managing of the account a lot easier. And then it's also good for reviewing performance and that you can group campaigns by certain objectives. So when you're judging performance for say a cold prospecting campaign, it's different than how you would judge a retargeting campaign. So I just wanted to walk through the taxonomy here and feel free to use this. And if you have any questions on it, please put them in the comment section. So to start off here, I have the, the template here that I use, the, the naming convention for the taxonomy. So for the campaign group, I use uh, audience type. Usually that's cold, warm, or retargeting. So if I'm targeting a cold audience and the overall goal is to get traffic to the website, I'll put traffic, so cold traffic. And then in here, here's the template for this. I use the cold from the campaign group and then I have the, the campaign objective. So it's a website visits campaign objective. I have the location targeting. So in this case, it's the United States. And then I have the network. So primarily I'm always running on the LinkedIn network and not on the audience network. But I do like to clarify that in the taxonomy because there are some use cases where we run a little bit of budget towards the audience network. So if it was the audience network, I would say AN here, and that's just shorthand for audience network. But I know this campaign's only running on the LinkedIn um, network. And then I have the audience targeting. I just try to use a name that I know what the audience is. So let's say it's construction project managers and then the ad format. So the big things here are the objective, the, the audience targeting and the ad format. It makes it really easy when you're going through your account to understand what's running, what's performing. And then for the ad, it's everything in the campaign name, except at the very end, I add an ad name. So just something that you can, you know, when you see the name, you can identify which ad it is. So this says just project table as an example, you can do demo V1. I usually like to use a little bit of a descriptor. And then if you're doing multiple versions and AP, AB testing things, you can do, you know, V1, V2, V3, et cetera. So that's an example there of how the taxonomy looks. And also, you know, if it's for retargeting and you're trying to drive, you know, demo requests and conversions, it's similar to this, just swapped out a few different things. We're retargeting um, and then we're using the website visitors 90 day audience in this example and the demo V1 ad here. And if you're doing another campaign objective, say, you know, video views, um, a few things would just change there. So we have the different objective, different ad format there. That's how I use the text on me. If I change this in the future or edit it, um, I'll make an updated video on that. But this can really be helpful when you're going through your campaign. If you're gonna be judging the performance on the cold traffic, then you're gonna be looking at, you know, what are your CPCs? What are your click-through rates? How much is it costing to get users to visit your site and to get that initial engagement? And then when you're running retargeting, you're gonna look at more, you know, down funnel metrics. How much are they engaging? Are you getting demo requests? Getting you know specific conversions that you're aiming for? And you can review the performance ex instead of just lumping everything together. This makes it very easy to segment and review performance. And also, uh, if you're pulling in the data into another platform, it can help you segment it there. And you can also use shorthand here. Uh, a lot of times I use a little bit shorter hand, but I spelled it out. So for say single image, you might want to just say like SI for shorthand. So you know like single image would be SI and you can make your own um, adjustments there and shorthand things as needed. So if you have any questions on that, please put them in the comment section. I'd be happy to help you out and thanks for watching and have a great day.